Yeah, he's all okay. Okay, I'll tell her that you last. Uh, I, I, I'll send it to you. Can I open it somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we need to pause this now. Oh. What, what, what storm are there? Is it Meshulayach now? What? Those two storms, what are they? Hey, can you give me those two, those two books? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 I'm apologizing for that to leave. What? I'm apologizing for that to leave. Yeah. 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 Two minutes. Okay, good. I know it's late, but two seconds. Where's <coughs> Shimon, you say? Okay, this is like one of the deepest tires. In general, you know there is Yehuda Elor and Yehuda Tato. There is high oneness and there is low oneness. You know, sometimes, you know, a person says, you know, the best way I can explain it to you is, you know, when you, when you fall, Koran, right? Mom should fall down. I had the privilege of seeing two people falling down. Let's first say the lower part. In my synagogue, I'm sure the Yeke, Mamish, a German Jew, like, from all four sides, right? So I watched him. So a few minutes before falling down, right, he begins to look at the crease in his pants. He thinks, ah, oh, you know, bad scene, I have to fall down and my pants would be dirty, I just got them from the cleaner. So I saw him running out and got about 55 tons of New York Times, spread them out, he shouldn't get dirty, right? See what it is, he's falling down before God, so he wants to say there's only one God, right? 
Yeah, but there is only one God, but his pants are still there, right? So he's thinking of his pants. And then when it comes to falling down, you know, Mamish, he goes so slowly down into his knees to make sure that the pants don't get dirty and everything. And he gets up. And maybe in heaven is precious. But he didn't stop being himself for one split second, right? Then the old Mojitsa Rebbe, the Mojitsa was maybe six foot four. Mamish. Giant, and I'm sure he must have weighed maybe I don't know, was strong like a lion, you know, and his voice. He was one of the only in the world who had the highest range, from the lowest to the highest, like unbelievable, like uh, not to be believed. <coughs> Someone comes from Nachman Kohen. See them there, Mamish. Everybody was afraid God that this Mamish killing himself. They had. Carpets and, and, and did everything because Mamish, when he said Vanak Nakoyim, was nothing but God. Nothing else. But you see what it is? Basically, when we say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekenu, Hashem Echot, God is one, at that moment, there's nothing left. There is nothing. And when I say after that Bor Shem Kavod Machus Vayinamot, God's kingdom. You know what the king is? He needs people in the kingdom, right? Shema Yisrael is there's just God. And when I say Bor, blessed be His kingdom, I'm going back to the world. There is a world, but God is a king. You see, when I say there is nothing but God, I don't say God is a king. There's nothing else there, right? The moment I say God is the king, I already say there is a world, but God is the king. So what am, what is my purpose in this world? My purpose in this world is to bring about those two onenesses with God. There are moments when I'm when there is nothing but God. But you cannot live like this. If there's, you know, Shema Yisrael say twice a day for one second, because they cannot bear it for longer. I cannot say it's nothing but God, so then nothing is in my hands, right? So I go back. And you know something between people the same way. Some you love somebody so much, you stop being yourself, right? Nothing, you're not even there, right? And then sometimes, I love you, I'm I, and you're you. When it comes to learning, it's the same way. <coughs> Some people are learning, you know, and every phone call throws me off, and while I'm learning, I'm thinking about too many other things. It's low oneness. I'm close to the Gemara, or close to the book I'm learning, but I don't stop for one second being myself. And then there's a learning, Yehudi Loa, you stop to exist. I want you to know something. Um, I mean, there are thousands of stories, you know. Rav Yonison is one of the greatest, if you heard of him, but Rav Yonison is about 250 years ago. He was like, wow. Uh, and, this, and he would never wear a jacket when he was learning. He was just in a shirt. And one time, it was winter, and, and didn't understand something. He ran out in the garden, and they couldn't find him because they could not imagine him sitting in the cold garden. He sat there for 12 hours in the cold, and then he came back, and he wasn't even frozen. You know? He was like... <laughs> he was so much one what he was learning, you know? You are, right? You know, when I was a little boy, I, I, I had the privilege of being in the yeshivas. My parents took me to show me yeshiva. So I saw somebody, and they told me he's 17 years old. And the way he's learning, he's learning eight hours, stops, eats a little bit, sleeps, then again eight <coughs> hours, that was whatever it is. Eight hours. 
and he doesn't have a watch, but he asks somebody else to let you know when the eight hours are over. I watched him. He, he stopped being himself. He was standing, come on. So every one of us, we have to go back and forth. There are moments when God wants of us to really forget about ourselves. And then there are moments you can be yourself, but do this. So, you know, sometimes a person talks to you, but they are so much themselves, it smells so much from them, that the words don't really enter you, right? Listen, I will tell you, I think you should keep Shabbos. But while I'm saying it, I think, listen, me, me and Shabbos. No, look at me, Shabbos thing. How did, perhaps you the wrong way, right? You don't want to hear what I'm doing on Shabbos, you won't know what, what's the Torah was saying you should go on Shabbos, right? So me and Shabbos, so you and I are on a very low kind of oneness, right? And sometimes someone says to you, Mamish, tell me what really is, right? <clears throat> you know, most people, when they talk, we cannot help being a little bit ourselves, right? I'm not annihilating myself. Do you know the Holy Rishna? When he would say Torah, he would say, Zugir, I say. And when he said, I say, he didn't mean he, I. I say. Because you know, King David, when he was talking, he didn't say yes or no, he would say, I say. Because King David would not open his mouth unless it's shining to him from above. <coughs> so the story is that the Heilige Sadiger, the son of the Rishna, when he became a rabbi, the first time when he said the word I say, which is awesome, all his teeth fell out from his mouth. He was shivering so much, you know. He's mamish, annihilating himself completely. Anyway, sad enough today, even all the original rabbis don't say anymore, I say, you know? No. Who will send you? I say this. I say. But they can just talk like a human being, you know, cut it out, right? Because it's not for real. The last Yana who said, I say, was in New York. You know, I, I told you a thousand times, some of you, the last night of Hanukkah, the oldest my brother and I went to his tish. He would walk in and he would say, Zugir, I say, today is the last day of Hanukkah. But when he said it, the floor sweat with tears. Awesome. And then the whole Torah, you know, would, let's say it was half hour. But out of the half hour, 20 minutes was, I say, right? I say. He was on the level, obviously. When he said Torah, he was on the level that, of high oneness, right? He was being himself. Do you know the Rabbi Rabbi Lemelech found on the desk of his desk, his son had written down, the Torah, he says, for Shalish Shoes. Right? But the man looks at him, he says, wow, this is wow, this is Torah. So he says to him, why well, you said it? He didn't remember. You know, the Holy Sansa, you remember? The Holy Sansa, by the third meal of Shabbos, they would sing, and then he would say, and then he would say, Torah, Nobody could hear what he says. His, just his lips would be moving. <coughs> and this could last between five minutes and sometimes 14 hours. 
But you know, I'll be sitting here. <laughs> You'll walk out of me. They will leave a note. When you wake up, you know, call me. <laughs> you know, when he, when he was, and the Hasidim call it the stille Torah, the silent teaching. So when, when he began the silent teaching, everybody in the room was out of their body. You didn't have to cough. You have to go to the bathroom. The only thing is, you have to stand somewhere, right? So everybody wanted to stand somewhere. But this story I heard in Bobov. His grandfather, Rabbi Shlomo the Bobov, when he was, never, he was an orphan, his father was left, and he was, let's say, 12, 13 years old, comes for a third meal, and it's dark, hundreds of people, and he was like hanging in the air. And he knew every second of my grandfather's beginning to say the silent teaching, and I have no way to put my second foot on. He had one foot on the ground and the other one in the air. So suddenly, you know, f- f- feeling his way around in the dark, he hit on something, looked solid. And the turn was 10 hours. After 10 hours, someone would come in and bring in two candles so he could see. You could see the whole floor sweat with blood because what he put his foot on is on a rusty nail and the nail had completely penetrated his foot. But you see, doing the silent teaching, he didn't feel anything. And he's 12 years old, and those days they had no penicillin. God forbid to spoil or the amputated foot or anything. He ran on to his grandfather, and you know, he loved him. He says, Oh, he says, what happened? So he says, I stood on a nail, and it penetrated the whole foot. So he says, when did it happen? So he says, later, doing the silent teaching, he says, what's that? He says, don't you know that after you sing Mizmah Ludovic, you mamish just saying Torahs? And the son says, yes. Is this a Zai? Yeah. Is it really so? I didn't know, he said. But then he says, if it happened during that time, during that time, if I would be you, I wouldn't worry. So it never hurt him. There was always a hole in his foot, but it never hurt him. I want you to know something. Again, imagine I see somebody drowning. What happens to me at that moment? I stop being myself. Right? It's high oneness. Someone says, give me five dollars, it's low oneness. Rabbi Nachman says, what we, what we are messengers of God is to bring into the world these two levels of oneness. That for moments, everybody has to be like, Mamish one is God, or Mamish one is what, what you're learning or what you're doing. And then, but most of the time, for 23 hours a day, there's also a high level, low, low oneness means I know I have to be one with it. So Ram Nachman says, when you utter words in a high oneness, it's like a torch. Every word is shining into your heart. Good Shabbos, good Yom Tev, Mamish, thank you so much for learning. Thank you, Shlomo. Um, A few words before you...